Today we're at a mountain bog in northeast Georgia for a Georgia Plant Conservation Alliance work day. I'm under the GPCA umbrella and have been having work days here for years and years and years with everyone represented here. And so today we're doing our annual invasive species work day. We are at a very important very special bog in northeast Georgia. It's one of the seven or eight bogs that the Georgia Plant Conservation Alliance has been working to restore and manage for the last 15, 20 years. And in fact, the two things that we work on mostly at this bog is number one, to uh, remove the invasive species and remove the woody competition that would naturally be here. So Zoo Atlanta is here to uh, help to eliminate a uh, invasive grass. So our main purpose here is to cut this grass, uh, microstigium, before the seeds have the ability to fully develop and um, disperse here in the bog where they are not supposed to be. This dense patch of Nepal grass that will have the zoo crew cut when they're done cutting on the road, it can get pretty tall. And you can see it's in these wetter areas where the stream flow and the sediment has flown in from the road. Some of these larger trees are slowly killed to slowly open up the canopy and slowly restore the water flow that's been reduced by the evapotranspiration through the trees. The reason why we girdle the trees instead of simply cutting them down is that it would give sort of a hydrologic shock to the system which could cause more erosion. The second thing we do is that we propagate rare plants in greenhouses uh, at some of our, uh, the GPCA propagating partners, the Atlanta Botanical Garden, the State Botanical Garden, Chattahoochee Nature Center, and others. And we then take those rare plants and we put them back into nature. So this is one of our rare plant microsites that contains the purple mountain pitcher plants. This is a state endangered rare bog endemic, which means that it only grows in bogs. With Saracenia, they display the most fascinating characteristic of being carnivorous. The purple pitcher plant, they have funnel-shaped hoods that actually direct water down into the pitchers. So if you look closely, you can see that that creates these aqueous microenvironments where microorganisms that prefer to live in water can thrive. While these pitcher plants do have some enzymes to aid in the digestion of prey, they rely heavily on their symbiotic microorganisms to help digest the prey for them. And then the pitcher plants will then absorb the nutrients from the excrement that settles down into the bottom of the pitchers. If you look very closely, you can see that there's downward pointing hairs on the hood of the pitchers, which directs insects to crawl in, but then they're not able to crawl out when they turn around. Also, when you get to the neck of the pitcher, it's very, very slippery which also makes it difficult to escape. We have a handful of other rare species here too. Here we have the federally threatened swamp pink, Halonia spolata. And uh, right now it's just a basil rosette, not much to look at, but in the spring, it has beautiful flower stalks that have rose pink petals and bright blue anthers. So here we have another locally rare bog endemic which is Cuthbert's turtle head. And so this used to be much more plentiful here, but because of the hog impacts to this area, we're only seeing one flowering stem this year. Luckily, it spreads vegetatively in a pretty prolific way. So hopefully in the next few years, it'll grow back. The, the big focus of this particular work day uh, and a recent problem that we're dealing with is feral swine, uh, feral hogs. Feral hogs uh, love to wallow in these kinds of habitats. They love to root around in the sphagnum moss. They love to look for insect larvae and amphibians, and they will root up entire areas and ruin our plantings, and they have done tremendous damage to this bog. Uh, we are in the process of really getting after the hogs right now, excluding them from the outplantings using these, uh, these wire lumber sort of exclosures that you see in front of you. Uh, and we, are, we have intentions to put a fence around the entire bog. And earlier this year, we've actually come in to reinforce the stability of the rare plant microsites to prevent erosion that was started by the hog activity. This fencing that we installed in 2017 takes a little bit of maintenance, 
We've got to pull the vegetation out of it. Sometimes it sinks down. So I'm just gonna pull it back up. And that in combination with this brush and the cut logs will continue to keep the hogs out of the area. So this area, because of the hogs, there was almost no sphagnum moss left at all. So we basically had to recreate a little island to put the plants back in. So Emma's found one here and we're gonna be removing this grass to uncover them. Here's a piece of that invasive Nepal grass, also known as Japanese stilt grass. It has a shallow root system, so it is easy to pull out. Um, like we said, it's an annual, so we don't like to use any chemicals on that. It's not necessary. These plants are gonna die each winter. We simply wanna pull them out or cut them back to prevent seed production. As you can see, things are looking more stable here. We have some of the pitcher plants are starting to bloom again, which means they'll be able to start reproducing again and hopefully produce more seedlings to recolonize the areas that were impacted by the hog damage. Our plantings are taking and they are actually recruiting the next generation, so we have been successful. Today we've done a lot of work with a big crew, 15 or so people from several different organizations have descended on the bog to help. Mm -hmm.